For the last video this week, and indeed the series, I want to talk to you a little about the lyricist and composer of the song A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square and the circumstances surrounding its composition. Eric Mashwitz, who was responsible for the words, was born, not far from where I grew up actually, in Birmingham in England in 1901. I was born a little bit after that. Uh, he went to the University of Cambridge where he started an acting career. In the mid-1920s, he was hired by the British Broadcasting Corporation and he developed and presented a successful radio chat show called In Town Tonight, which ran for nearly 30 years. Um, Mashwitz not presenting it the whole of that time, um, but he did develop it. And this is significant because it's one of the first ever um, chat shows. So he's responsible for developing the form of chat show. In 1927, he was hired then as the editor of the Radio Times, the broadcast listing magazine, which he um, worked for for several years. And then from 1937, he was under contract with MGM in Hollywood, during which time he co-wrote the screenplay for Goodbye Mr. Chips, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award. It was during this period, just before the outbreak of the Second World War, that he wrote A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square. During the war, he held a variety of positions, mainly in intelligence, uh, serving with the sabotage unit of the Secret Intelligence Service. It sounds so juicy. Um, and helping to establish resistance organisations in Yorkshire. Also during the war, he was briefly in charge of supervising radio programming for the troops. And all this time, from the 1920s through to the 1950s, he was establishing himself as a writer of musical plays, composing both words and music. The most successful of these was Zip Goes a Million, a vehicle for the musical entertainer George Formby, which ran for over 500 performances. In the 1940s and 50s, Mashwitz was appointed several times as the chairman of the Songwriters Guild of Great Britain, each for a 12-month period, which was established for the encouragement and protection of popular music. And then in 1958, he rejoined the BBC, initially as the head of light entertainment, and by 1962, he was the assistant to the controller of programs, and it was in this capacity that he began to explore the possibility of a science fiction drama program, which eventually led to the creation of the TV series Doctor Who. Needless to say, not everybody from Birmingham enjoys such a varied and eventful life. We can hope. The music was written by Manning Sherwin. This is the music for A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square. Um, was written by Manning Sherwin, who was born in Philadelphia in 1902 and went to Columbia University in New York. In 1938, he moved to London, where he had a long and successful career writing music both for the live theatre and for film, moving in similar circles to Meshwitz and his collaborators, um, who, with Ivan Novello, dominated the West End theatres during the war years. Like Mashwitz, Sherwin was prolific, writing songs which featured in movies like Blossoms on Broadway from 1937, College Swing from 1938, and A Girl Must Live from 1939. He also wrote the scores for movies such as Stolen Heaven from 1938, King Arthur Was a Gentleman from 1942, and Once Upon a Dream from 1947. As with Mashwitz, the vast majority of his songs, with titles like it Must Be You, Time and Time Again, and Under Your Window, and When the Eagles Fly, are now entirely forgotten. Largely because he worked in a light entertainment style that didn't really withstand the onslaught provided by the syncopated rhythms of rock and roll, which revolutionised mainstream music in the 1950s and 60s. So it's worth remembering that these songs and the musicals from which they were taken were extremely successful in their day, um, and provided a soundtrack to London during the Blitz uh, and uh, in the aftermath of the Second World War. These forms of light entertainment certainly made both Mashwitz and Sherwin sufficiently wealthy that they could afford to take a vacation to the south of France in the summer of 1939, which is where they wrote A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square. It was written in a tiny fishing village called Le Lavendeux, uh, which is in the Côte d'Azur region of the south of France. And it was given its first performance in a local bar with Mashwitz singing the words whilst holding a glass of wine and Sherwin playing the piano with help from the resident saxophonist. Mashwitz later wrote in his autobiography that nobody seemed impressed. 
I think, though, that it's quite telling that the song was written far away from the scene that it describes, because Barclay Square here appears as a kind of fantasy. Where Arlen, himself located in the Mayfair district of London, describes the boredom of the place, the song sees it in magical, nostalgic terms that is the product of the imagination and not of direct experience. It's also, I'd suggest, a product of the genre of sentimental light song that dominated the London theatres in the 30s and 40s, and that often painted the city in propagandistic terms that might remind its audience of what the suffering of war might be for. Between them, Mashwitz and Sherwin wrote hundreds and hundreds of songs like this. And it's not immediately apparent that A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square is significantly better than many of the others. But it's the one that got picked up by numerous recording artists who've kept this one alive while the others have languished. It's a song that has enjoyed the snowball effect of popularity in the era of commercial recording artists. A couple of successful artists recorded it, which made the song well known, and so more people recorded it, and so it became even better known. So now it ends up becoming popular because it's already popular. And there's a lot of really, really great recordings of this song. So I really encourage you to dip in and sample as many as you possibly can to see which one you like the best. 